Good morning, GBS. The title of today's proverb is Good Words for Young People. Proverbs 31. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So here's what we're supposed to teach our children. This first part in the easy translation says, if you want to know how to live well, you must first respect and obey the Lord. And then it goes on to talk about how fools are the ones who refuse to listen to, you know, to God, basically. But respect and obedience, that's what we need to teach our children. And if we do that, then they will live well. It's crazy because a lot of us are adults and we don't even respect or obey the Lord. And you wonder why a lot of us out here wilding out don't understand what's going on me against the world and we don't live well maybe this is a message for us more so than our kid it takes both parents to raise a child or to raise children it's not okay to just have a mom it's not okay to just have a dad if we're raising kids with just one parent our kids are missing a whole half of a lesson that they're supposed to learn. It takes both. Even as a woman, I need to be around my father so I can know what type of husband I'm supposed to marry. I need to know what a man is supposed to do for me. I need to know how to act around men. It's a lot that's missing when girls grow up without a daddy and vice versa. When sons are only raised by mothers, oh my goodness, they don't even know what it means to be a man. And then you have today's culture that says, you know, freeze your eggs, you don't need a man, you know, you want a child's kind of like just adopting a pet. You can do it if you got enough money. No. Here, it clearly says that it takes both. And even in a commentary, um, the reason why Solomon wrote that is said because in his time, both parents taught their children. So families are broken if it's only if it only has one parent. And it's sad that culture accepts it and pushes it to be the norm, but it's really not. And that's why I, my head goes off to, you know, single moms in particular, because in my family, we have so many strong women that raise their children by themselves. My head goes off because it ain't no joke. Just me being here, you know, for like months, month or two with my kids oh my god I could not imagine having to live my whole life like this because I have to be on 10 100% of, of the time and it's exhausting and nobody should have to live fighting every single day you should be able to you know raise your kids with half of the effort sometimes because you have that other half to do the work that's balanced that's normal but like i said today's world is like hey you know <laughs> family is anything you call family but people wonder why things are so broken or messed up or why people are so stressed out and you know it's just it's so hard it's not supposed to be so hard it's not supposed to be a burden it's supposed to be enjoyable but that's why it's because it takes two it takes both the mother and a father a circle of leaves around your head and a chain around your neck will make you more beautiful in the same way what your father and mother teach you will make you a better person so if we're trying to raise up our kids to be the best person 
the best version of themselves that they could possibly be, it takes both parents to do that. They will be beautiful on the inside and out, but it takes both parents, a mother and a father, to do that. If not, we're not equipping them to be the best that they could be. No book can do that. Now, again, if we're in a situation, this is what's so dope about God. He makes the the weak strong. So if you are a single mom, um, that's why the, the Bible refers to God as being I am. He's like, I am your husband. I am your father. I'm a father to the fatherless. You have to have a relationship with God so that he could fill in that missing spot because he would definitely send help. He'll send the lessons through other men. You know, he'll send what what the kids need in their lives to be who they're equipped to be. But if you don't have that relationship with God and that's broken too, man, no wonder why society is the way that it is today. We have generations of broken people that's trying to rule the world that's trying to survive that's trying to live it's all wrong it's all wrong <laughs> let me get my baby okay this next part is all about games and it's up to us to teach our kids about them because if we don't then who will when bad men try to cause you to sin, my son, do not do it. They may say, come with us. We will find someone to kill. We will attack people who has not done anything wrong. When we find them, they may be alive and well, dead. but they will be dead when we leave them. We will get lots of valuable things and we will fill our houses with them. Come and join us. Our money will be your money, and your money will be our money. My son, do not go with people like that. Stay away from them. They cannot wait to do something bad. They're always in a hurry to kill. The bird that you want to catch may be watching you. So do not show the bird how you would catch it. In the same way, these men want to kill other men, but in the end, they will die themselves. This is the end of everyone who will kill people to take things. So this is the message that we need to teach our children. And this is the way that we need to teach them. As I was recording at a Bible study, it was what well, the Holy Spirit told me to include your son. You know, you're talking about your son and how you raise your son to not join a gang. Include your son. Let him read my words. Let him know what I think about gangs and let him see why people join gangs and why he shouldn't. And I asked him, why, why would you join? Why would a 10 year old boy join a gang? And it says it's it here because your money is our money. We gonna come up, we gonna hustle, we gonna rob people. They won't see what's coming. You know, we gonna make a lot of money. I said, does that make sense to you to join a gang because you can make some money? And he's like, no. I said, well, why do people do it? He, you know, he said, well, yeah, because, you know, you get to buy stuff and you make money. I said, but God is our provider and you have money. You have everything that you want and everything that you need and anything that you think you want. You know, we can get it from God. So would you ever need to join the gang? It's like, no. And then I love that it says here what happens to people in gangs their lives end up as nothing. They end up being the ones that they're out there trying to kill. Talks about the whole, you know, bird thing and you you know, you need to watch out because that bird will mess around and get you. And I, I pray for wisdom with that. And I'm like, Holy Spirit, what do you mean? What are you talking about? But right after that, it breaks it down and it says, well, you're going to end up in that bird trap. It's clear. It says that person will die themselves as a result. So this is the message that we need to teach our children. When you're recruited in a gang or you accept the invitation to be in a gang for whatever reason, it can be for status, it can be for street cred, it can be for money, whatever, the getting girls or whatever, the result here, this is what God is saying, is they're going to end up dead. Now, 
you may know some gangsters growing up like, well, they ain't dead and, you know, they still alive. They ain't died. It's a possibility that you can, you know, hustle and, and not die. Well, you know what? There's different forms of death and it's not always physical. Yet we know that that's a strong possibility that that can happen to, you know, boys that join gangs. But the other type of death is spiritual. And you cut yourself off from God when you live in that type of life. You praying to him and you not going to get answered. You, you ask God for things and you're not going to get it. You need protection in them streets and you ain't going to get it. So that's what it means to be dead on earth. It's a spiritual death when you're cut off from God's love and his protection. It's that type of death. And then we have hell. Say you live in that life and you die that way. Where you think you're going? I mean, really? You don't have no relationship with God. You ain't doing a God thing. You ain't about that life. You about that hustle. You about that money. Money is your God. Well, we know you can't take it with you, right? So when you leave, it ain't like you're going to a, a place that's just full of money. That don't exist. So why make that your goal or your destination on this earth if that can never be your eternal goal? So it's up to us parents to teach our kids about this trap that's been set since the beginning of time. What we're reading in these Proverbs was written a long time ago. And it's crazy that our kids and our youth and our young black boys and our brown boys are still falling for this same trap today. They chasing money. And what does it say? Where will they end? Well, where will they end up? It says death as a result. So again, parents, if we're not teaching our children this important lesson, who will? Don't let them streets get to your boys before you do. And your girls too. Our girls too, our black and our brown girls too. Don't let them streets get to our children before we do. So what did you learn about joining a gang? So the only reason why kids join a gang is for the a gang is for the money. They only want the money because they want to join the gang to be special too. They only want the money because gangsters really love money. So they're literally hiring Hiring. other kids Mm -hmm. to have shotguns, shoot people, murder people, also for just for the money. But they don't realize they're going to go to jail. They're doing a sin. They're doing a sin by just joining a gang. They're murdering women, men, and children just for the money. Okay, that's it. Thank you, son. You're welcome.